Welcome in, everyone, to another episode of the Home Pod Office, where we talk everything HBO. We are continuing talking about House of the Dragon. I'm Bobby. He's Brandon. Hey, we uh we are talking about episodes five and six today. Um, a lot happened. This uh, happened a while ago. We've been busy. We haven't really been able to get in, into the studio to record this, uh, but we're excited to be back. Um, no guest today. Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be back with a guest so you don't just have to listen to us ramble on about things, um, next time. Uh, but how you doing, bud? Duh, doing good, man. Uh, excited to talk some House of the Dragon for sure. Uh, a little sad. We're so far ahead in real life in the show because, uh, yeah, you know, I've got so many theories and stuff. So I got to kind of try to keep my theories <laughs> episode four yeah. and episode five or uh, episode, um, I'm sorry, episode five and episode six based, uh, but yeah, man, looking at, looking forward yeah. to to getting getting uh, digging in. We're gonna get into the meat of it. So yeah, always exciting. You know, always fun to nerd out about uh, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, uh, stuff like that. But let let's jump right into it. Episode five um, throws us right in at Runestone, where we see the bronze bitch herself, uh, Rhea Royce, um, Damon Targaryen's legal wife. Um. Well, technically least, not. Well, maybe legal, they never been consummated. They never boned. So yeah. Uh, but I, 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 <laughs> just, I want to. I just wanted to make a quick comment on that. We we heard Damon early in the season mention that sheep's are traditionally better looking in the veil. I'm not gonna lie. Those must They're be gonna have some. They got some sheep. hot. They got some hotty, hotty sheep in the veil. I must say. Yeah. I must say. Yeah. Um. So that would be that would be just the one comment I have on that. But I really love the scene. You know, in the in the Fire and Blood, uh, the books and the 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 history book. It doesn't it doesn't really explicitly say. You know, it's it it is. Yeah. Uh, alluded, it alluded to, to it, but um. Uh, but yeah, so you kind of, kind of get to have that, that closure and that story, you know, that when they're telling it on the screen, it's not a history book. They can actually kind of tell you some of the stuff that they want you to know. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, but a good, we do see, you know, of, throughout the show, you know, when, when people talk about it, you know, it's kind of, they're kind of talking about it kind of the same you would read in the history book where it's like, well, you know, she met an untimely ending. Everyone's like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah. Uh, where, where okay. was Damon? Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and in, in, in the huh. book, in, in Fire and Blood, and I, and I believe in the, the history book more so, he, George R. R. Martin explains Damon as a universal, it's, there's, he's, there's never been a man so loved in the seven kingdoms and yet also so hated in the seven kingdoms. Uh, yeah, a guy like, uh, like Jamie Lannister, you know, comes to, comes to mind or, or, uh, Damon Blackfire comes to mind when, when you talk about that kind of guy. So Damon, such a, yeah. you know, again, another, another whole scene, a whole little, little mini story in itself, uh, with, with absolutely no dialogue from Matt Smith whatsoever. And, um, yeah, you, you felt every, every moment of that scene, um, where Damon is, uh, you know, he was going to walk away. He wasn't even going to, going to, going to do anything. And then she, you know, insults him one more time. And he's like, okay, you know, I'm still, I'm still Damon. I'm still Damon Targaryen. Okay. Uh, wielder of uh, yeah. dark sister. So, uh, there's only so many, you know, comments, little comments you can make to, to that guy. So, uh, yeah, great, uh, great intro, great opening scene, great adding to the lore uh, of this world. For yeah, sure. 100 percent. And uh, fun fact, that scene where that was filmed is the same scene uh, where they filmed a bunch of scenes from uh, The Princess Bride as well. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, uh, inconceivable. Little, uh, valley in England. Inconceivable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, all right. So <laughs> we move on now to back to King's Landing. Where we see in a rainy day, we see the old town, some of the old town troops heading out, and we see Otto recently uh, being removed as hand of the king, uh, departing. Uh, and Allison coming out, having some words with them. They get in a little bit of an uh, of a you know a disagreement. You know, obviously Allison uh, went kind of off track of what Otto wanted, which you know at the time great to see because uh, I mean yeah. it's very clear from the beginning that right. Otto is. Um, 
is is controlling Allison for his own ends, and they talk about it more in you know episode nine that just aired the, uh, last night, which is very but, rare in Westeros. I mean, everybody's it's usually super chill, and no control is being <laughs> exerted over people and yeah. stuff. And so this is an odd situation. It's a it's an abusive yeah, one, and she needs to get out of it. <laughs> She's the queen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, what really, you know, we saw, you know, at the end of episode four, we saw a little bit of this in the scenes from next week where, you know, Otto pretty much says, you know, get Aegon ready. War is coming. And if he's not ready, then we're doomed. Um, and, and I thought this was a great, you know, scene of acting from, from both Allison and Otto. Uh, just, just, just overall like and you know he kind of he's being super petty he could have you know been in a, in a carriage but he's like no i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna get pneumonia you know the king wants to put me out i'm getting pneumonia i'm showing him <laughs> yeah oh yeah absolutely i mean you know uh love the scene love the you know him kind of laying it out there i mean this is not he's a politician and he you know kind of wants to get his way but everybody it's really to what links and how good you are at it. Everybody's trying to do some stuff yeah. like this for the most part. You know, yeah. you got your, you got your more prideful families like the, like the Starks and, but even them, they're, you know, forging alliances and, and, you know, sliding and sneaking and trying to figure out how to get more power. I mean, that's really the only thing that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's measurable in this world is, is the power that you have. Uh, a scene yeah. that comes to mind. Scene we see. Well, I was just going to say a scene. A scene that comes to mind from the from early in the game of in Game of Thrones, that uh, really you know kind of hammers the point home to you when uh, Littlefinger and Cersei are walking, you know, walking down the corridor, and Littlefinger's like talking about power and how knowledge is power, and Cersei says, you know, guard, step forward cut Peter ba- and cut, cut little, uh, uh, Lord Baelish's throat. Stop. Don't do it. Step <laughs> back three step. And he, she kind of, she's power. like, yeah, power is power. And so we really see Otto trying to hopefully impart that onto, onto his daughter. Um, while again, yeah. you know, just, just wanting to go to, to their own end. Um, yeah. And I mean, and kind of, that's off what you said. If we look also again, uh, you know, future on a game of Thrones when um, what's his name? I can't remember his name. The onion Knight um, says, I- I'm not, Lord I'm not, Davos. I can't be talking to Tyrion or whatever. He's like, like uh, Davos is talking about how I can't, I can't be the hand of the, of the King. I'm, I'm, I'm not educated. And they say, yeah, well, Otto Hightower was an educated man and, and you saw what happened to him. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I think that, you know, that I love that, you know, they kind of, you know, talk about those little things in game of Thrones. Um, but yeah, I think this scene is the first like, outright 100%. Yeah. I think this scene is the first outright 100% act of treason that we've seen. He straight up says, Aegon, like he's, he's at, he is 100% talking about usurping the rightful heir to the throne in open in the Red Keep. Yeah. Yeah. I like mean, that is, and- that is a ballsy move when, I mean, we just saw some Targaryen guards walk past them, not a 30 seconds pr- before. Yeah, I mean, he he is he's aware. I mean, everybody's aware. It's one of those things that like, hey, it's all good until you say it out loud. Um, And we have some more of that coming along, you know, in the season. So, I mean, this is not the first time that we that we'll we'll encounter that. I mean, this is the first time we'll encounter it, but not the last. Um, But yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of warning, warning her, um, you know, of what's what's to come and what, what can possibly happen. Yeah. Um, in the future. And so a, a really good, a really good send off of where she thinks that uh, she's yeah. doing what's right and that she's helped uh, do, do the right thing. And, and, you know, and our, you know, depending on your opinion, she did, uh, but not necessarily for uh, the eventuality of what, what will come. Yeah. Uh, and now we move to a scene that in my opinion is one of the best set pieces I have seen in game of Thrones. Um, Driftmark is a beautiful set piece. Be- I mean, pr- honestly, all the props to the set design and the crew. That is a well done. Um, that's a well done piece. That's, it was the the, fil- the obviously the cinematography was great, but trust Driftmark is beautiful. Um, it's exactly what you would think it looks like when you read about Driftmark. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and it, it's it's yeah. luckily it's and, one and for of- people who don't know. Um, I know. Yeah. 
I was Go just going to say, luckily, it's not one of one of George R. R. Martin's mind, you know, mind thing like Casterly Casterly Rock, which is like normally like you know, seven thousand feet, you know, in the yes, air, you yeah. know, like or the or the Iron Throne that's you know to the sky, yeah. and it's like three stories. So it's so, but yeah, I agree. It was it was beautiful and the landing there? Uh, we get to see our first you know action from our, our from our boy. Lionel Strong, the new hand of the king. So uh, super, super cool to yeah. see them land there. But we we get to see Corliss is still mad. He's still upset. You know, Westeros can yeah. they can they can hold he's, it. Dude, he's, they can hold he's, a grudge. He's, he's, he's a little petty. They he's can got hold a petty a grudge. bone in him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, he's, man. I just yeah. got home oh. like seven days ago. Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> and they you know they were not they were not <laughs> happy about that. Viserys, he is a. He's a good king and, you know, a lot, every other king, you know, imagine if Magor showed up not to be greeted Well, the out, the outrage right. that would have followed. But Viserys is like, you know what? I'm, I'm too old for this shit. Right. Let's just get it done. Yeah. Like, I do, really don't care. Sick, dude. Like, sick. It's not like there's a bunch of people here. Sick. That boat ride you know, sucked. It, it, man, reminded me, boat ride yeah, sucked. it reminded me a lot of like when, uh, you know, in episode one of Games of when Robert Baratheon showed up and you know obviously cersei and jamie and all them they wanted this big you know royal wealth robert Baratheon was like just get over here and give me a hug my dude yeah, like come on yeah. man what's up bro um, what's good what's good yeah and I, <laughs> um but yeah then we see you know uh you know the the set the decorations inside of driftmark was amazing we see uh corliss sitting on the throne and kind of taking his time getting sitting up off the throne when the king walks into the room you right. know, because at the end of the day, you know, it, it's it's even if it's he's the uh, Lord of Driftmark, uh, all thrones in Westeros belong to the king. And I, I think it's like supposed to be like if we, when the king's in the keep, no one sits in the throne of the keep. No right. Matter yeah. If, if it's like like a Stark would not be allowed to sit on the throne of Winterfell in the when the king's in the keep. Um, exactly. Yeah, so, that's, uh, that's the, yeah. the case. So, you know, sure. a little a little bit of a slap there. Um and, you know, that's kind of when, you know, uh, Viserys finds out about Rhea Royce and he's like, oh, shit. Well, no, that's not why I'm here. Uh, you know, and, and he has the proposal for, you know, combining the family, something that our boy Lord Strong has been trying to get going for trying years to make it happen. now. Finally, he's got it done. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, gives I mean, him... we'll see throughout the show that our boy Strong cannot catch a break. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's uh, he's, you know. He's a he's a good guy. He's a good guy. So he's been trying to push for this. He knows it's the right move. And, you know, Corliss, having been burned before, uh, spurned from the, the queenship and getting, you know, his grandsons in, in line for the throne. Uh, hopefully he kind of kind of shoots him the, the question immediately. Uh, your lord, my lord, you know, uh, if they get, you know, get married is the, are their kids going to be Valarians or are they, you know, yeah. going to, and, and Viserys doesn't miss a beat. And he's like, surely Lord Corliss, Ooh, you're not yeah. saying surely Lord Corliss, you're not saying that my, um, that our dynasty in my house house should be destroyed and the house ends, uh, because uh, simply because Rhaenyra is a woman and, you know, and then you get that little smirk from Rainey's in the back. Uh, Hmm. and then, and then offers him right after that kind of showing him, Hey, you know, like I'm really the one in charge here. You know, you're in charge here on drift mark. If you want to think that you want to sit in the throne and you want to not greet me when I get here, I don't really care about any of that. All I care about is the Targaryen name and the dynasty continuing. Yeah. And really, we know in Viserys' mind, all that he cares about is the Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, the, the, yeah. the Targaryens yeah. are um, are that kind of people. The only thing the prince that the prince that is promised is is what he needs um, and what he wants. And so, only yeah. uh, way to get there. He doesn't need to fight. He doesn't need to have petty squabbles with lords. He thinks he's on a higher mission. So. He, he gives him a good compromise when they're born, they can be Valarians, but when, if they are to ascend to the iron throne, they will do it as under the name Targaryen. And so, uh, it was an acceptable proposal and we kind of get Corliss and, uh, Rhaenys back in the, and back in the good graces of the, um, uh, <clears throat> 
of, of the crown. So I, I really, I really liked yeah. how, how that scene was done. It, um, it, it was, it was very well, very put together. Well, you know, kind of how, how it all went and yeah. you kind of get to see the series coughing and he's not, you know, you can tell the sickness is kind of starting, uh, which we will. Yeah. And, we yeah, will and I, I mean, to, and back up see. a little bit, I love the way, uh, Rainey's, just kind of walked in with that swagger. Just yes. Like, cousin. Petty. She's like, comes cousin. over and up like, cousin. My cousin. Like, she's you know. just, she's just, you know, she's, ha- she's coming it, in from a dragon ride. She's just having a time of her life. Man. And, and it shows, it shows the series, the series leadership style. She could have Tony Soprano'd him uh, like he did Steve Buscemi pulled him aside like hey you can't razz me in front of the guys anymore just because we're cousins and so <laughs> the series could have done that but again my man's is like dude we just had a boat ride i've been yakking the whole time i want to get back on that boat yeah. and go home uh so i can be you know back in my back in my bed and stuff so loved loved that scene yeah um one thing i really like too is we see for a slight moment <clears throat> where and we see, it comes later in episode eight uh, he's eyeing the um, the Crab King's mask a little bit, you know. He, you know, was there just kind of sh- like looking at it, kind of admiring it, and we see that kind of thing. Co- you know, we kind of see where you know. Obviously, if you're more than likely, if you're a show you saw in episode eight that we'll talk about in a couple weeks, uh, you know, he's got the the golden mask on half his face. It almost feels like he kind of was like, you know what, that crab, that, uh, that crab King, that he I'm had in. a little bit of swag. I'm gonna I'm gonna rock that. I'm um, in. yeah. Um, but then we, uh, you know, we. See the, the walk on the beach, but yeah, that's what I was going to say. I didn't uh, know I, it yeah. wasn't on our list. So yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. very important. Um, yeah. The, uh, yeah, like it's a very important walk on the beach between uh, our and Lenor where, you know, R- Rhaenyra is, you know, she's, she, she's got that, she's got that big dick energy about her. She's like, here's the deal. My man, we got to marry. I've done, I've done been fucking with my dad for too long. We, I, yeah. I'm done. She's like, I headache. recently, let's just. I've recently yeah. pulled some. Sh- I've recently pulled some shit, and I'm not gonna get out of this one. Like normally, yeah. it's like some little. It's like some. It's like a little pile, but like this is a big pile, and I I need to. Yeah. I need to. Yeah. But yeah. You know. So uh, she's like, yeah, and she's like, I I get it. You know, I, I got people who talk. I know what you're into. You do you. Yeah. I do me. Let's just do our our. You know, do what we got to do for the court. Um, and. You know, Lena was kind of caught off guard about it, and, and Renee was like, "All right, uh, but uh, you know, I, you, she's like, I'm not looking for you to accept because you don't have to accept because it's not it's not up to you. I'm just right. you know how it be. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna. Um, it's, even if he had been like, ah, you know, I'm not really into that, she would have been like, oh, well, I am into that. So <laughs> right. Um. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, d- definitely. Definitely. And, you know. No, yeah, I was just gonna gonna right. agree. Yeah, I was gonna agree. I mean, you know, it's it's very progressive. You know, it's like those two young kids that are, uh, you know, under the repressive rule of their parents, and they're like, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make this work. Uh, it'll it'll definitely uh, be all right. We got money, you know, but money solves everything. Yeah. You got money, you get to do what yeah. you want on the general. So yeah." Yeah. Um, and then, it, it, you know, we cut back to, uh, you know, the the Great Hall of Driftmark where it's uh, Corliss and Rain, uh, Rainey's talking, just the two of them, you know, kind of discussing, you know, they, they're like, oh, wow, they, you know, the king had to come crawling here. And they're pretty much like, well, you know, this is, you know, they, they realize that the writing's on the wall now that there is a true born son, Aegon Targaryen, you know, they got to do something here. You know, the, uh, the Valerians get it. Ra- Rainey's gets it that, you know, something has to be done. Um, and, you know, Rainey's kind of brings up, you know, if we, if we take this step, it's not just us who are in trouble. It's our children. It'll be our grandchildren. They say, uh, Rainey says, you know, the knives will come out. She didn't say the swords will come out. She said knives, which to me makes me think that she understands, like, this is not just going to be war. This is going to be assassination attempts. This is going to be, this is going to be a dirty, yeah, this is going to be a dirty, uh, situation. That yeah, children. Get, what when we get involved in this? Children are gonna get their get, get their throat throats cut on either side. She knows this. Um, you know, you prefer to not have yeah. that have that uh, high target, high valued child uh, in the in the crossfire. Uh, but she's she's smart. Yeah. She knows she knows what what's happening. Um, a- absolutely, you know, such a such a great character. You know, I'm so glad we get to learn a little bit more yeah. about her. 
um in through the through this show and frankly i think an underrated character in the series i feel like you know everyone and i frankly because there were so many big names in this show um you know uh you know like matt smith everyone's focused on damon and, and viserys but Ray, Rainey's and the actress that's playing her is doing a, such an amazing job and this is such a powerful character that i mean she carries a good bit of these episodes when she's she carries some of these scenes that she's in yeah um, i i, I, I that's I, awesome to see yeah love that love the character for sure i'm not uh not uh not disagreeing with that at all yeah um but yeah so we uh leave uh Jeff mark we uh on the way back we now see uh Kristen cole without his armor on um and he he goes full simp mode, man. He's just yeah. like, hey, let's uh, I'll go on to Veneer. He's like, let let's just let's just skedaddle. Let's, you know, le- leave all your inheritance and all the stuff that makes us have like have this you know intimate relationship that we do. Let's just screw it. Let's just go be poor. He's like, right. not thinking the fact that she has a dragon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. Um, and she's just like, dude, are you, are you stupid? <laughs> like, we were just we we're just banging, bro. Like, he. I've heard him explained a lot like Sansa that has heard these stories. He's from a, a smaller family and he's heard these stories in this glorified, you know, nature of knights and knighthood and, uh, you know, fair maidens. And so when he's, you know, he's broken his vows. And so that's a big deal to him. And so him going away, them going away when when she asked him to essentially be her, you know, his, her, you know, sex toy, her, her whore, her whore, her whore uh, you know, it, it was a breaking point, you know, Hey, well, I, it's like a song to him, you know, Oh, they, they've, they've rode off into the sunset together, you know, to live happily ever after and, you know, left everything behind, he, you know, not really seeing he's hearing her complaining and, you know, just, just generally complaining to one you know pillow talk so yeah he he really lays it all out there and then you know gets his feelings hurt so bad the entire the entire (laughs) you know he plunges he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna pull pull some pull some stuff man he's like man this was hey this was the wrong decision lady (laughs) okay uh yeah, yeah so. that was i mean i mean and, and i mean she 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 lays out you know she's like i i am the crown i you know i can't i can't run from my duties because i'm the one like she's like i'm the one like i yeah i bitch about it but you know like yeah well, i'm gonna and bitch I, about it bro well, like, especially everybody else and everybody else doesn't know about the prophecy and stuff that she's carrying around yeah. with her. You know, like a lot of people are forgetting that. Like she can't really tell everybody that she thinks the weight of the, you know, entire world is on her, you know, uh based off the information given to her by Viserys and his talks with who he wanted to be his heir. So, uh Yeah. And it's not like a she and it's not like an Aegon situation where he's not, she's never said I don't want to rule. She's just bitched about the way that things have been going. Like she's doing teenage stuff. She's bitching right. because you know her dad's kind of an asshole at times. She can't, you know, she's not getting her way. But she's never been like, I don't want to rule. She's been pretty clear that you know, hey, yeah. You know, once I, she, once named, she didn't heir. think she would rule because she was a daughter. Right. Once named heir, she yeah. she uh, I mean, for all accounts, took everything very seriously um, or attempted to, uh, you know. Minus yeah. the minus the mi- minus the men section, uh, you know, I, I would imagine she <laughs> she studied war and studied tactics and studied that kind of stuff um, and just didn't want to get married. I should say that she was studied yeah. the men section, just not the marriage section of the men. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then we immediately move into uh, they arrive back at King's Landing and Kristen Cole is summoned by the princess and he's like well i just left her and they're like nope the other princess uh or the queen or the queen the queen it's like and he's like all right and then yeah it's just in a absolute what i can only describe as a scene that i would assume was written by larry david um just a series of fuck-ups in that scene where he's like it is just it, it, it i hate those kind of scenes because i hate 
scenarios where it's caused by a mix up where it's like, right. oh, well, uh, I didn't realize you were talking about that. So I caused a bunch of trouble, you know, and we see that in the end right. of episode eight. And it's like, oh, my God, all of this is because of a fucking mix up. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah, I, I mean, mean I, I've always hated that cliche <laughs> in that trope in, in TV. It well, it goes, but it goes back to you know Kristen Cole being that jilted lover. I mean, he was always going to tell. I mean, this is yeah. this was just the perfect opportunity. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, he I, wanted to be caught. He wanted to say it's not like he got and like he doesn't to, to him. He doesn't in his mind. He doesn't. He didn't fuck up in his mind. He he was looking for a reason to tell somebody. Yeah, I mean, as soon as she said no, he was like basically like, all right, so you turn left out of her quarters, or you go, you know. I mean, he was he was gonna tell, uh, but but my man's my man's straight to it. You know, Allison's like, I heard, and he's like, you heard right. <laughs> he's like, you was absolutely one hundred percent correct. I done did um, it. I did this. I did this. I did this. I also did this. Uh, I didn't tell anybody about this. There's no way you could ever know this, but I also did this. Uh, but what were you talking about? Yeah. Not any of that. Not any of that. Uh, Kristen Cole <laughs> is, uh, Kristen Cole is, is definitely becoming, he's becoming a guy <clears throat> that I, that, you know, that you, you kind of start to have a distaste for, but he doesn't feel like a real villain. Yeah, so at this point he's still just a kind of he's a kind of a dick. At this point he's not the bad guy. He's right. kind of a dick. He's a jilted um, lover. Good catch, good catch. Um yeah. Um we we go on then to uh see the king's condition is getting worse and we see that the grand maester is you know doing the same thing the leeches, the maggots, you know, all, all this stuff that he's been in and then we see a younger maester his name escapes me kind of say, "Hey, um I, I got some Argyle, new, uh, Argyle? Some tonics we can try." Cargo, that Argo, that sounds right. Um, and I think, you know, going forward, you know, I past this, we see, you know, even up till episode eight, that the king survives a lot longer than I think people would have thought he did. And I think it's because the Grand Maester dies and this new guy becomes the Grand Maester and, and he is able to prolong the king's life with his tonics and his way of doing things. Um, yeah, Maester. And I think they start laying the foundation where he, yeah. Maester Malos is we, the one. We see and that he's dead. Malos, okay, Malos. Okay. Um wait, Grandmaster Malos is the one that was used like the the old white guy that uh is now dead? That I believe so. Or he's he may be not he may be still okay. there. I for, I'm forgetting all the way back to five, but yeah, I mean he he does die and uh the other guy uh yeah, takes I over. think he gets replaced in the next episode. And Maybe he so. gets replaced in six or seven, I wanna say. Um but yeah, so we, we see that the king's condition is getting worse. Um, but then he surprisingly pulls it all together, you know, and kind of, you know, pulls his boots up. And, uh, you know, we, we move on to the pre-wedding feast, which is just an, uh, another great film scene inside the Great Hall. You know, the lords and ladies from all over the Seven Kingdoms are arriving for this week-long, you know, royal wedding, uh, you know, festivity. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing all these names being announced, uh, you know, and it, it, the uh, the Valerian's introduction was super fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, they kind of interrupt everything for that. And then we see Damon's entrance, which was just such a baller move. He just took himself out of exile and said, yeah, I'm here, man. What you going to do? He's like, and, technically, you know, the Ceres being the. He's like, technically, I was only exiled from King's Landing. He was supposed to go home to his wife, who is dead now. We were, if we remember back, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. So, <laughs> so he was technically yeah. not. Um, he was in his rights to be, to you know, or was it? At, it was at the Red Keep. Excuse, excuse yeah. me. I was thinking we were still at Drift. Yeah, it was at the Red Keep. Not. So he definitely, yeah, he's back. No, yeah, it was definitely the Red Keep. I was like, <laughs> well, yeah, he he just brought himself back, and you know, the king's like, fuck it, get him a chair. Yeah, uh, I mean, he kind of just sits like a ball over to the side. He's like, "Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm here." Um, He's like dragging the and... chair across the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I oh, I thought it was really cool. Uh, you know, Rhea's voice, uh, Uncle, coming up and be like, "Hey, uh, we we punish murderers," and he's like, "Oh, are you admitting to murder?" Yeah. And he's like, "Well, no." I'm, he's like, oh, okay, well, I'm here to get my inheritance. And that shuts dude up quick. He's like, oh, fuck, I got to get the hell out of here. I'll be up there. I'll catch you. <laughs> like, I'll catch that. fired real quick. Yeah. And then uh, Viserys 
starts to starts to make his speech and um you know gets a gets a good portion into it and everything kind of stops uh as Allison yeah. Hightower kind of rolls around the corner in her her uh green dress. Yeah. Uh we hear we hear Laris lean over to um Harwin uh breakbones and said, Hey, you know, do you you know what the color of the high towers were the what is it? The um what color the tower you know, what color the old high tower, the old tower you, uh, glows when they call their banners to war. Yeah. And he was like, I mean, green probably is what you're going to say. Right. Like that would make the most sense. She's a, <laughs> she's a high tower. It would have been funny. He was like blue. <laughs> He's like, I have no, I have no clue, man. What, what color would it be? Um, and that kind of that kind of makes you know Viserys a little mad. You know, you see kind of his fl- he's flustered yeah. and he has to kind of go back into into his speech. And uh, this is the kind of first shots fired, kind of put out there by Allison after she you know got her dad sent yeah. away. Got her dad sent away, um, all for basically a lie. I mean, not technically a lie, but basically a lie. She you know she didn't do anything with Damon, but she uh, but Chris and Cole yeah. again let her know every every little detail i'm sure i'm sure he tattled all over the place yeah um but yeah so then we we just see the drama unfold uh you know they start dancing then we see damon and uh whoa, uh what is her name uh Lena. Lena. Le- uh his future wife Lena, Lena. Uh, kind of have a dance and they're clearly flirting with each other. And then we see uh, Damon and uh, Rhaenyra is dancing and oh, the F- Viserys' face when he sees that, he's like, God damn it. I know. Like, can we just have five minutes of you you guys not trying to fuck? My right. God. And I'm pretty, you know, it, it, they kind of cuts away, <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure that they kissed when he when he, when he pulled her close. Uh, but, you know, the view was blocked, but I'm, I'm on the well, side that they definitely, they kissed a, a real quick. When we have a conversation between Sir Joffrey Lonmouth, uh, the night of the kisses, uh, with yeah. Kristen Cole, uh, who again is already a little mad, a little upset, seeing his, you know, his uh, his love being pulled away from him by some, uh, what I would imagine he would probably call a, a beta cuck. Um, <laughs> you know, I just can just see him over there saying it, mumbling it to himself. Yeah. Uh, and jo- and Joffrey you know, kind of tells the game plan. Hey, I already know the game plan between Rhaenyra and, and Lenor, so I guess we're going to be friends. And he did not like that at all. Um, as we yeah. see uh, bring, coming into the scene that you were talking about, um, a whole lot starts starts going on, and there's a, there's a mad scramble. Uh, eventually, we see Kristen Cole getting... Uh, getting his on, jo- on Joffrey Lonmouth, uh, you know, making sure, I guess that he will never speak this to anybody. Um, yeah. I mean, only Kristen Cole can speak about it, right? Only Kristen Cole can tell people about <laughs> this. Um, he's already told one person and that's that, that's his one. Uh, but again, you see Viserys kind of confused and, you know, not knowing what's going on, uh, to the point where eventually, uh, Lionel Strong had to send in uh, Harwin to go in there and finally yeah. bring out Rhaenyra. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, this that was. Whole, I would say that th- this whole thing was filled with confusion, almost as much as confusion as I- I'm sure you had it as a book reader. I didn't know what the fuck was going on because that in the books, this is not where Kristen Cole confronted uh, Joffrey. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That... So I'm just like, what the fuck is happening? And it was a it was one of those, you know, uh, you know, fun little surprises as a book reader you get when they switch things up like that. Yeah, it and was so actually I'm just sitting there. I'm like, how is no, I was like, how like how is nobody? First off, I get it's a melee and it's confusing, but the prince just got hit. Where are the Valerian guards? Where are all well, the guards coming in? He is like, not. A, he's not a prince. Uh, he's not a I guess he's t- no, he's not a prince at this point uh, because he's they're only Morris? he's only a king's consort. Uh, Lanor? No, yeah, uh, the king. Yeah, but he, well, Lanor. I mean, he's still. Yeah, okay. Well, he's the uh, yeah. prince of, of Driftmark he's a, at this point. He's I mean, the lord. The He'd Valerians like, had their guards there. Right, right. Well, okay, sure. well, lord. Uh, but it's yeah. But again, the, either way, he's the he's he's a Valerian. Where are those Valerian a, guards? And a, where's the rest of the king's guard? Where's the rest of the guards breaking shit up? Well, like, it's the only people. Oh, Bobby I mean, B would. Yeah, the only people Bobby that would shut down real quick. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the king's job. Do you think that any household guard is, yeah. first of all, going to be trained to the level that they can pull off a king's guard effectively and not get killed? I mean, all I'm saying is, dude, you're getting paid like you're getting paid like barely above minimum wage. <laughs> and then you see one of the seven, one of the uh, from lore, one of the seven baddest dudes in the kingdom. Like they pick these guys special. They yeah. don't even let a, they don't even let these guys, you know, bone ladies. That's how dope they are at fighting. Yeah. You think that you're going to pull them off, Bob? You're going to be like, dude, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I was assigned to watch the ham. There's been a ham thief afoot. <laughs> And so I was told to not yeah. leave my post. So, but yeah, I mean, it definitely should have, yeah. should have been ended sooner, but, uh, but I mean, again, it's that, that King's guard, that white cloak kind of protects you. Nobody knows, you know, all you have to say is, well, I saw him going yeah. after the prince or I saw him going after the, or the princess or whatever, you know, yeah. but yeah, yeah it, it was absolutely wild. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I was surprised that after that, you know, maybe not too surprised because I read the books, but that Kristen Cole still had a job there. I mean, I guess he was surprised, too, because he well, he was like, fuck it. I guess I'm going to go and be a samurai real quick. Yeah. Like, I don't know what. He, like, that was himself. weird. <laughs> yeah. Tried to kamikaze himself. That like, was super, I'm, yeah. Uh, saved by the queen, who now will be, you know, have Kristen Cole kind of under her belt, under her thumb, under her, her belt loop. Um, and we get, you know, forget the big wedding, forget all the show. Uh, we get a crying Lanor and an upset Rhaenyra um, getting married in the feast hall with the, you know, Jeffrey Joffrey Lonmas blood still covered in the floor. Yeah. Um, both of them crying, you know, just I it was it was uh, uh, I, I put on there a shotgun wedding. Like I just see Viserys sitting there with black fire, like you're going to marry my daughter, <laughs> you know, like um, yeah. a very somber end and very somber start to this, you know, to this wedding for sure. I mean, uh, like you yeah. said, Joffrey Lonmouth actually normally dies on the, in the tournament um, uh, beforehand. Um, and I think the, in the books, it's very similar, <clears throat> a very cheap shoddy, think he gets him in the back or something um yeah but the, but in the books it's at least in a technical duel so like there's no like reason why he would be like lose his job like in the book there's no like right. it makes sense why he would could keep his cloak because it's a it's a duel it's a tournament like he got killed in a tournament yeah Not, but i mean he got I would, a brawl at a wedding and got his face smashed up. <clears throat> i would imagine you can make any argument as the king though you know or as the queen is you know viserys is very swayed uh, I think just left alone the yeah. series and Harwin, you know, and not Harwin, Lionel Strong. Let's get him, get rid of him, and you know, send him to the wall and get a new one. Uh, but if the series has one person in his life that he doesn't want to upset, say that they want this to happen, it's going to happen. And so uh, I think that's the kind of the, the yeah. thing with Allison. I think that's why they threw in there he was going to, you know, kill himself um, until uh, Allison you know, maybe went to bat for him. Hey, this guy, I'm sure they just yeah. came up with a story because the guy uh, that you did it to is not really telling many stories that are opposing yours. I mean, you have literally zero people that are telling a different story than yours. So um, yeah. I think it's, uh, I think it's a lot easier to, to sell in that, that instance. But again, in, in those tournaments, you know, yeah. going for killing blows is still not something that would normally you know, occur. I mean, some, some would, but, um, I mean, you would think, I, I mean, the way they wrote it in the book made it seem like it was like intentional and was not, uh, yeah, not savory, just kind of, kind of like this was. Yeah. So that wraps up, um, episode five. We'll kind of do a quick, you know, thought on both episodes at the end, but then we move on to episode six. Uh, where we get a uh, 10 year time jump, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and with this, we get new actors, new actresses. Um, frankly, I'm I'm OK with that. I know a lot of people are salty about changing the actors and actresses. I'm OK with it. No, um, no. I like the choices they made for the actors. These are, you know, for the adults. These are the long term actors and actresses that they'll have going forward for the next several seasons. Um, but we right off the bat start with the uh, Rhaenyra's birth scene which is about three minute long single shot, which really goes to 
you know, uh, I, I, Emma Darcy really acted her chops off of it because like th- that is a usually we in birth scenes in TV and movies. They're like, you know, a couple, maybe 20 seconds. This is a three minute one shot scene where they probably had to do it all in one or maybe two takes. Um, and it's it's, yeah. it's well, it had lot. to be um, it had to be and, one. Uh, it had to be one, Bobby. They had she had the baby after the first one. How would she? <laughs> how would how would they do two takes with uh, that? Well, we got to go again <laughs> in nine months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love loved the you know kind of the the open, and I mean it kind of goes back to what her mother said very early uh, in episode one of House of the Dragon. Uh, the, you know, the birthing room is our battlefield. This is where we'll fight our wars. Um, and so this is her third, uh, her third little war, uh, that she's had. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what, a what, a yeah, and a then powerful. we um, immediately see, yeah. Oh, for sure. And then we immediately see, you know, the baby, the new baby, uh, be summoned by Allison, obviously to check the color of the hair and the, and Rhaenyra's is like, nah, bitch. If she's gonna summon me, she, I'm gonna be. Pe- if she wants to be petty, I'll be petty. Right. And she, she get, she gets her her ass up and she walks. Uh, you know. And again, we see that this is a, you know, a lot of times we see. Um, and I was actually watching like the behind the uh, the behind the uh, episode thing after the episode, and that they originally didn't weren't going to film her walking all the way there. They were just gonna show her walking out the room and then show me that, but. They had built this set fully, not just like a staircase and a set. They, they had built the set and they wanted to use it. So that's why they filmed in a continuous shot her walking from that room through the main uh, area where all the people are up the stairs, down the corridor. Um, and, and I think that was a very well done shot. Um, it, uh, I think it really showed how strong Rhaenyra's is as a person and eventually as a warrior. Um, it was it was a it was a great scene. Yeah, and getting up there, um, you have you have Allison uh, inspecting the the child and uh, saying, "Oh, you really shouldn't have come." She's like, "Yeah, I know. You know, I, I know I shouldn't have come." <laughs> uh, but the I know this the the shots should have come. You know, can, go ahead and come again. Uh, oh well. Sorry, Sir Lanor. You know, maybe one, maybe one time, one of them will look like you. Mm-hmm. Just you know, wanting to throw that little, uh, that little pin prick in, uh, out there. Yeah. Uh, but Viserys, you know, we see Viserys, and he doesn't care. Um, he doesn't care that uh, what what we'll learn. All of the, uh, all of the three children are dark haired and clearly not Valerian, of uh, a, a, a Valerian descent. So. Uh, but but Viserys doesn't care. That's his grandkid, you know. I mean, uh, yeah. the one the the one thing uh, that a lot of people that you hear complaints is uh, all those all you people that uh, like Rhaenyra and hated uh, you know the the Lannisters. Well, there's a big there's a huge difference in this. Is that one hundred percent? I will guarantee you that those kids have Targaryen blood. Because we see yeah. all of that blood everywhere, right earlier in that battlefield scene yeah. that we were just talking about. We know that they're Targaryens. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, yeah, it, it was, wouldn't have mattered who the father Joffrey was. Joffrey was not Baratheon. Exactly. Right. That's the difference. Well, is yeah, the yeah. blood <laughs> from the ruler um, is, is yeah. you know, definitely passed down. Which is why Viserys doesn't care. He's like, you know, unless somebody says, this, she didn't actually give birth to him. That was this other lady. I don't think that any of <laughs> I don't think any of them are not uh, of Rhaenyra. So uh, definitely a big difference in in that. And we get the family scene, you know, the family scene where Harwin Breakbones um, Strong <laughs> comes in and uh, is like, "Oh, can I see the uh, the baby who they've named Joffrey, who we've recently talked about uh, of dying?" Um, and yeah. Oh, can I see? Yeah, I can't help dude? but feel like, you know, because it did seem like naming it did seem like naming him Joffrey was a very spur moment that yes. when they walk, they had to walk past Kristen Cole to even get in here. And that uh, and I was like, yeah, we're going to name him Joffrey. Uh, yeah. And just to remind the queen and Kristen Cole what, what you know, remind them what they did. And I yeah. thought that I thought that was a good little dig at them. Yeah, not a very. 
not a very uh, Targaryen name. And I think, uh, you know, you kind of heard Rhaenyra yeah. get a little flustered at flustered at that little little sticking point for sure yeah. but uh harwin and you know rhaenyra and the the two you know younger younger ones you can you can tell that there's a little bit of a happiness there that they were uh that they enjoyed each other you know they were were good con- yeah. you know they were good 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 pals good buddies um <laughs> uh, yeah uh so it was uh uh, definitely a good little heartwarming. Okay, everybody's everybody's good. I'm sure that uh, Lenor has his little, you know, his little romps on the side as well. So uh, you kind of think, all right, well, was, despite Allison being Allison, it looks like everything is um, is going okay. Yeah, but it wouldn't be a Game of Thrones show if everything stayed okay. Um, we we cut to the uh, Dragon Pit now where. Uh, we see Jace and Luke uh, with Aegon and Aemon um, getting their dragons. Um, at this point, I believe um, Jace is the eldest Correct. of uh, Rhaenyra's sons. Jacare, just yeah, just um, and I believe that yeah, uh, and uh, Luke, um, Lu- Lucarius, Lu- Lucius, Lucarius, whatever, whichever, uh, Lucarius. Is, is he he's the one getting his dragon. Um, is getting he's getting his dragon. Um, or at least we're, you know, he's been feeding him and, and trading uh, him and yeah, feed him. And yeah. And, um, and we see that Eamon, uh, still without a dragon. Um, they, but they do bring him the, uh, the pink dread, Valerian, the pink <sighs> dread, uh, which was a pretty good scene. It was very clear that this was an Aegon's, uh, you know, Aegon designed this, uh, prank, which then he, you know, gets blamed on, you know, Jason Luke, um, but yeah, again, I, I love seeing more of the dragon pit. You know, we end up seeing Eamon go down below and he sees um is it Dreamfire? Yeah, he sees Dreamfire. Dreamfire, yeah. Um down yeah, Dreamfire down there, who is the um mother of D- Danny's dragons that we see in Game of Thrones. Um those eggs were stolen well before this show. Uh so yeah, that, that that's really cool. Um and he kind of just like freaks out and runs away, you know, when, when uh, Dreamfire is about to uh, refire. And then he immediately runs off. I guess he's getting caught by some uh, dr- uh, the dragon tamers and taken to Alicent, where we see uh, Helena, who is maybe a dreamer, maybe a green seer in some way. Uh, you know, she's saying things, you know, she's talking, she's got some bugs talking about. You know, she, uh, uh, you know, oh, uh, all these legs, and the last one has no leg. You know, the last rung has no legs. Maybe talk about Bran. You know, the one who's the last in the line <laughs> of kings. Uh, you know, so, and then you know, he's talking about, well, I want a dragon, and and she's like, well, you'll get one. And he's like, well, you'll have to lose an eye. And book readers know exactly what that means. Um, and I'm sure people who were caught up, they, yeah, that she, right. she called it. Um. So that that's a really cool scene. Scene that you know this might this you know we might have a Targaryen dreamer here. Yeah, I mean all the way all the way through seeing the dragon, seeing them you know the younger ones. Even though they have this brown hair and they're clearly not Lanor's children, they have dragons. That's all that matters, right? They can they got dragons. They yeah, can, they can tame dragons. They can ride dragons. So yeah. ultimately, yeah, again, and, it goes and, back to why yeah. and nobody can just tame care. dragons. Yeah. People, people think, and I saw some people t- talking about this, that like, it's not a matter of just getting control of Dragon Beetle, Sweet Valerian. There was um, blood magic in Old Valeria that bound these dragons to the, to Valerian, to the uh, people of Old Valeria with Valerian blood. So, you know, when we see it in the books where somebody at one point, I think it's later on in the uh, Dance of the Dragons, uh, the Greens are pretty much saying we need we're recruiting dragon riders. So a non Targaryen, I want to say he's like a Baratheon, just like a lesser Baratheon tries to go in into the dragon pit and grab, take a dragon, tame a dragon and he gets burnt alive. You can't like a regular person, with regular blood can't just go take, just can't go get the, you know, these dragons can are smart, can sense the magic in, in this, in this blood. Right. Um, and, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. So, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a, a really good scene and uh, upsetting, upsetting Aegon uh, being uh, being a little, little whiny about it. Goes and tells his tells on him to his mom, uh, and then we get um, you know 
where where the scene where you see Helena, I'm I, you know obviously the the Targaryens can it can either be deeply profound dreamers or she could be crazy or you know we don't really know at this point. We just know that she's not um, a normal Rhaenyra or Alicent type of younger girl that we've met previously. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but then we get Alicent being upset and going and, you know, going to confront Aegon and, uh, Aegon yeah, who, is, yeah. um, uh, you know, he, he's, he's, he's beat, you know, beating the old meat right he's out the, the meat. window. He's beating his meat. He's beating mm-hmm. his meat right out yeah. the window, man. I mean, uh, just right on to King's Landing. I don't know. It's like, you know, he's a young teenage boy. So he's like. If you squint like this, that that building over there looks like a boob, dude. You know, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, and you know, when, you know, watch. I remember back in Game of Thrones when, when uh, Tommen jumped out that very same window. I thought he was the first king to ever jump out that window. I didn't know Aegon was just throwing a bunch of little kings out that window. Dude, there were the millions of kings just <laughs> spread all <laughs> over the place. Like, I'm like people are like, dude, I hate getting guard duty there. You know, there are birds that poop on me yeah. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what they're, and I don't know what they're, and I don't know what they're eating either. Okay, so it's gross. Yeah. If we're being honest, if we're being <laughs> honest, uh, and so yeah, so his mom comes in, uh, which is always what you want, what you want, uh, and blames it on, uh, blames it on, on him, and he, you know, shifts the blame off of, off of himself onto his cousins, yeah. and uh, and I don't think Allison is stupid enough. I think Allison knows that it's him. Allison knows who her son is. <clears throat> You know, oh, we yeah. see it a lot more in some of the later episodes, but I think she she's aware that he's a shithead. Yeah, he doesn't and care. I think she's a. I think she's also aware that the that the um, that Rhaenyra's kids are are good kids. It's not their fault who they are, right. or in her eyes. So I think she understands that. You know, like yeah, my oldest is kind of a piece of shit. You know, he doesn't. He just wants to whore around and drink. Um, well, and we figure, and we hear but, one of the one of the more sticking, one of the bigger points. Um, him saying, well, Ray Rhaenyra is going to be the queen. And he's like, so like, who cares? Like he doesn't care. He's resigned himself to the fact that he's not yeah. the heir. He doesn't have to worry about it. Yeah. Uh, but she kind of, st- he's right. Why, why? Like Allison's the only one that cares. Yeah. Like him's, him's her. And then her telling him, well, she'll, she'll kill you guys. She'll kill all of you just to make sure, you know, kind of just spreading that, that, that little, you know, pit of fear in their in their brains uh about Rhaenyra being willing to yeah. go that far and w- willing to kill her her nephew or her brothers excuse yeah, brothers which, and sisters yeah which in my opinion is just more bullshit from Otto I don't think I don't think Rhaenyra would kill them if she became queen I mean unless they you know didn't I mean if they did what if Aegon would have do what Aegon would have done which was bend the knee I think that she would be okay yeah I mean right uh, and plus, I think by that age, Aegon would have left. He would be in Pento somewhere, whoring around. Like, <laughs> yeah, they would have probably had to send him away for things that we'll that we'll see. Uh, but then we go on to the training ground, which uh, another big another big big thing happens. All of the young princes are, are there training together. We get yeah. we get uh, King Viserys in his uh, in his in his wheelchair. Um, sitting out there, maybe it's just a general chair. I think it's a. I think it's just like it's just a chair, yeah. Uh, but Lionel Strong sitting there, and he's got his dope bald head, and he you know he's just standing there, just a, as a proud grandfather. Um, <laughs> you know, just a just a proud yeah. a proud papa. Yeah, and we have Chris Nicole, you know, focusing all of his attention on Allison's kids. We have uh Howard Strong out there, you know, helping the other boys, and then they kind of, you know, they 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 face him off, you know, in a super unfair fight. And even in this unfair fight, you know, um, Jace, uh, I believe is, is it? Yeah. Jace is the older one, I believe, Mm -hmm. um, um, is able to, you know, hold his own and against, uh, you know, the older Aegon, you know, and, and until eventually Kristen Cole kind of tells him like, Hey, don't, you know, don't show, you know, don't hold back at all. And, you know, then we get an altercation between, uh, you, you know, Chris Nicole kind of calling out Harmon Strong, like, oh, you know, it's weird seeing how attached you are to these boys, you know, something you would see from like an uncle or, you know, maybe a dad. And you see Harmon Strong, Cousin. you know, that, it, yeah, he, uh, he fucks up a little bit. He lets his emotions uh, kind of get the best of him. And he, he kind of beats the shit out of Kristen Cole, which really goes to show you that, you know, Kristen Cole 
beat Damon in in, in a fight, and how is Howard Strong just beat the living shit? Well, I think fight. well, D- Chris and Cole got what he wanted. He wanted to draw a response, so I don't think we got yeah. a real. We didn't get a fight. Uh, you know, I think yeah. uh, he just wanted to draw that response, and you know, it seems like why would he just do that? Uh, but I think it's probably built up. You know, over 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 the years and time, yeah. and seeing the way he's treated his treated his his sons essentially, um, and you know that's obviously a big problem to to strike that king's guard, and it goes back to what we were saying, Bob. You know, back at why why Kristen why yeah, no one pulled guard, Kristen yeah. Cole out because I mean it can ruin everything, even if you were in the right. You know, being in the right doesn't mean anything. Yeah, if that guy's got that white cloak or that hand. The, of the only one who could pull hand. him out would be another king's guard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, really. um, or or a king, or the, or the king himself. Um but that uh that kind of kind of sealed the the fate there. Um but yeah, I mean why yeah, it may, the only one that could pull him off would be another king's guard, really. Yeah. Or maybe the king. Um all right, so this uh you know the the fight in the training ground kind of starts a snowball of effect where you know, uh they the initial reaction of Viserys is they strip him. He's banished from the, from the towns, from, from King's Landing Guard. He is going, you know, he pretty much his dad said, you know, wants to resign. And I think that his dad is able to keep him from getting the King's justice, keep him from going to the wall. Um, but he does, he gets banished from King's Landing. He gets banished from uh, the town, the, the city guard. Um but we go over now to our well, first. Well, oh, that's a, I mean, I, I, well, that's a that's an important important part. I mean, him getting him trying to give up the hand handship. We have Allison in the room attempting. He, he, Viserys saying, "I'm not going to let you do that unless you can tell me, give me a reason why." And Allison really wanting at that point for him to hopefully say, you know, this is why because of you know my son's, you know, in, in discretion, you know, uh, in, in discretions. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. 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 My son's, my son's indiscretions, uh, and, and he won't do it. And so the King won't accept it. And then he decides, Hey, well, can I take him to Heron Hall? You know, can I take the trip to Heron Hall? So I, I just, I, we hadn't talked about yeah. that. I thought that came out after, uh, Damon and Pintos, but maybe it did come in before. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, now we see our first look at, uh, you know, Pentos and the free cities, uh, in house of the dragon, uh, where Damon and his, uh, wife and children are there, you know, it starts off with them doing like a little, you know, kind of just like a, a show with their dragons, kind of just like showing off a bit. We see, we see Vagar, the largest dragon in the world, which is fucking <clears throat> dope. Very well done. And Lee looks yes. amazing. Yes. Um, just a very unique dragon. And I, I love that he doesn't look, you know, she doesn't look like all the rest of the dragons in the show. Um, Huge man. And, and I, it's really cool. You know, she, you know, it makes sense. You have to have those ropes and stuff just to, just to even begin to ride or you have to get on those ropes. Um, and we see, you know, uh, Damon pretty much being like, well, let's just stay here. Like why go back? And, she, and uh, the, the, uh, Pintoshi's like, well, offered them. That, this, that's our home. Pintoshi's offered him money to, you know, essentially yeah. uh, stay and just be guards. You know, they're like, you don't really have to do yeah, anything. Yeah. Just like every once in a while, fire dragon around and just show them off. And um, yeah, and she's like, these people don't care for us. We are, we are, we're Targaryens and Valerians. We're not mercenaries. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. And He's so, like, but we have no responsibilities. Um, That's the good part to Damon. Yeah. He doesn't, uh, doesn't have that, that responsibility. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, uh, anything else you wanted to touch on in Pentos before we head back over to Westeros? Well, I mean, we should probably go, I guess we can kind of go ahead and touch on the fact that, you know, uh, Lena is pregnant with the, with the third child and, yeah. um, going to be, going to be giving birth very soon. And I guess really we can kind of just kind of talk about the, the last two scenes, which are going to both kind of end in fire. Um, so Damon and or uh, Lena, uh, I forgot is, that happened this episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lena is uh, giving birth, and it uh, it is going it is going poorly, and we actually get to see the the opposite uh, of what Viserys did uh, to Emma. 
and uh, yeah. them them and come and ask and said, "Hey, do you want us to try to cut the baby out?" And he was like, "No, absolutely not." Uh, to the uh, to the point where it's so painful, and she has always talked about dying a dragon rider's death. Uh, and a- after talking to him about wanting to go home, and gets out to Vagar and um, has v- Vagar douse her in in dragon fire, so she can you know kind of yeah. end it end it at that point. I mean, it was already. That childbirth thing is, you know, if it's not successful, uh, you know, at this time period, you're pretty much, you're pretty much done. Yeah. So, um, so kind of getting that and then going and, uh, the curse of, of Heron Hall strikes again, you know, um, the, the, there's a fire that breaks out and, uh, Sir, uh, Sir Harwin Breakbones strong and, uh, hand of the King. Lord Lionel Strong are killed in this fire, and uh, old, old creepy Lara Strong decides <laughs> uh, that he tells the queen, um, "Hey, by the way, dad and brother are dead, so your dad can come back and help you out as hand of the king again." Uh, yeah, man, I did not uh, did not see that that coming really. Yeah. So. Wild that Viserys' first option was like, well, I guess we gotta go back to Otto. Like, there's I other know. people, man. I mean, it's like, other, did nobody else apply for the job? Or, I mean, I'm just so, I'm just so I mean, it's just, I mean, to be fair, it's the same as, you know, college football coaches, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's the coach house, you know? Otto's yeah. like, Otto, it's Otto. Hand of the king house. <laughs> Otto heard, Otto heard, um, uh, 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 Lionel died, and he was like, "Oh, he was like Roy Williams, like coming into the locker room, baby." Yeah. He's like, "Let's go, let's go." <laughs> so yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's also we yeah. also forget that it's not necessarily this this great. Uh, I mean, it's a good position to have, but it's not this great position that a lot of lords would want to leave their you know, lordship yeah. to do. I mean, Otto's a second, a second son. Lionel strong was just the Lord of Heron hall. Uh, not necessarily, um, uh, you know, and I'm sure he was just gifted Heron hall. So, uh, I, I don't, I don't remember the lineage of, of Heron hall. It always is, is changing hands and whatnot. So, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, you don't really know. I don't know. I, I mean, again, it goes back to Viserys is very easily swayed. And so all it takes is, Al, you know, Allison being in his ear and saying, we should bring my pops back. He's a good dude. He yeah. served his time. Um, I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you, what are you thinking, man? What, what is, uh, were you, were you expecting that to be, you know, this episode, this early? Um, the strong, uh, of Harmon Chong being killed. No, man, that caught me off guard. I thought we were going to have another episode or two of them before that kind of thing, you know, happened. And that was, I mean, yeah, it struck me because I was like, damn, I really was hoping to see more of him in this show. Yeah. I mean, a, a funny scene that we that we missed kind of before there was when Rhaenyra went up to uh, to Lenor in the when he was in the training yard with his with his dude, Sir Carl was like, pack your boyfriend. We're going. All right. We're going to the Dragonstone. <laughs> yeah. All right. Go get yeah. him. Pack up, pack up all your little stuff. And we're going, we're going home. So there, so we have, we have seen Rhaenyra's family heading to Dragonstone and does not learn about this, uh, this immediately. Um, yeah. And it was very reminiscent of, you know, uh, them arriving at Dragonstone, very reminiscent of, uh, Daenerys and, and her, you know, entourage arriving at Dragonstone for the first time. And, you know, kind of just the, the that set, that episode from Game of Thrones ending on them looking at Dragonstone for the first time. Yeah, we we've, we've really, really, we're really getting that stage set between the blacks and the greens here. And then this next episode seven um, and and eight, both we really kind of the divide is starting to become more and more apparent as as we yeah have folks grow up. Yeah. Um, so before we leave off, where would you rank these of, you know, now this of the six that we've talked about on the show, where would you rank five and six on your top six? Whew, that's tough. Um, I mean, they're just so, I, I don't, I don't think yeah. I could, I don't think what I could do, rank yeah. them. I don't think I could rank them because they're just yeah. all so integral to each other and they're yeah. all telling different. I think for me, it, it, it's very easy for me to put number three at the top. And the rest, I'd have to do a lot of thinking to actually put down in a ranking. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, it's more scenes to me and learning more about the yeah. depth of, of what Martin was thinking when the histories were written. Or what he's ch- kind of changed in his mind sure, yeah. to to change what the history's written. So I don't know that I could uh, could rank any of these necessarily. Uh, a few that are coming up would be hard for me to not say that uh, rank very highly for me. Yeah. But all right, guys, um, that wraps up this episode of the Home Pod Office. We're excited to be back again uh, sometime soon with episode seven and eight. And then we will, uh, after that, do episode nine and ten separately and then come back around for a full overview. Um, but until next time, uh, for Brandon, I'm Bobby. We'll see you all next time. Peace.